Hi, this is John, and I was doing a video on Judges 11 and 12, I think, about Levites, a concubine, when I came across something that I had been looking for for a long time. Now, it's not definitive proof, but it is very, very interesting to me, and I hope to some of you who are interested in okay I was looking like I said um, at judges and I came across his concubine was that they called excuse me they called the land of Jerusalem Jerusalem Jabus so I looked up well why do you call it Jabus okay and I found well because the Jebusites were in charge of it. So I looked up, well, who are the Jebusites? Okay, and this is Wikipedia, where I generally, I like to start there. My two major sources tend to be um, the Bible and Wikipedia. But it says, oh, and excuse the noise in the background, because I'm not alone. I'm with other people who are happily living their own lives. So, you know, please, uh, ignore any outside noises. Okay, it says the Jebusites were, according to the books of Joshua and Samuel from the Hebrew, Hebrew Bible, a Canaanite tribe that inhabited Jerusalem prior to the conquest initiated by Joshua and completed by King David. Although a majority of scholars agree that the book of Joshua holds little historical value for early Israel and most likely reflects on most a much later period, the books of Kings as well as First Chronicles state that Jerusalem was known as Jabus prior to the event. The identification of Jabus with Jerusalem is sometimes disputed by scholars. According to some biblical chronologies, the city was conquered by King David in 1003. Now, that may not seem all that interesting to you, but before when I was making videos, I had stated I was going to do a video on King David beyond the one I already did. Now, I did one on Solomon that, you know, rightfully annoyed a few people because I stated that, you know, I think it's very strange that Solomon is loved by the Masons. And also, why was he king? He was not the oldest son, so why did he get to be king? And also, the my mother loved Solomon, and she used to talk all the time about how he was a young man, and God came to him and said, "Hey, you know, well, you know, paraphrasing, of course. Hey, Solomon, um, you know, what can I do for you?" And Solomon, instead of asking for riches and all that, this and that, he said, "Can you make me wise?" So. I always thought, okay, well, there is some question as to whether or not he remained loyal to the Most High. So life is not always a matter of wisdom. That was my thought back then. And then when I got older and I actually started really trying to read the Bible and figure out what exactly is the message here, it occurred to me that why did David die at 70? I mean, people lived longer then, maybe not by a whole lot, but they lived longer in his time than ours. Plus, he's a king. Why did he die so young? Now, a lot of people, my sister died at 60, and I felt her death was extremely suspicious. And I would tell people, well, I don't think, I think something's wrong. I'm being lied to. And they would say, well, she was old. But, you know, 60 is not that old. And especially if you have had not a cushy life, but you worked mostly office jobs. So if 60 is not old for a woman now, 70 is definitely not old for a king. So I couldn't figure out, well, what happened to him? Well, then I read about his childhood. And I thought, oh, okay. The catchphrase now for everyone is narcissist. So the Bible's been telling you about um, evil people who do come out of the womb and start speaking lies. It's been telling you that for the longest. 
And it also tells you, well, I can't tell you the exact scripture right now, but I'm pretty sure it tells you somewhere in there that being around them can really um, shorten your life. These people tell you the devil is here to, but to kill, steal, and destroy, and his children. Like the uh, Messiah told the Pharisees, you are from your father, the devil. He was a liar and a killer from the very beginning. Well, his children are exactly the same. And if you are around them, well, there is a chance that you are shortening your life. So I figured, okay, that explains King David. And also, I had serious questions about his father. Because uh, David was basically an abused and neglected child. But anyway, that's a, another story for another time. But the thing is, I wondered about Bathsheba. Now, when I was a little girl, like I said, I was at the Kingdom Hall. And we had what they call district assemblies, which I loved. Because you, it was a whole lot of people. You got to sit outside. Sometimes in the baking sun, it was so hot. One assembly that we went to, it actually melted my camera. So you sit out there, but you were still around a lot of people. And my situation was not that I met anybody because I was raised in an extremely narcissistic and abusive family. So I was pretty much isolated. But every year we went, I considered it a chance. Maybe I'll actually meet people that I can be with. But one thing I really liked about the meetings was they put on dramas. It was like looking at Bible plays. Well, actually, that's exactly what it was. Bible plays. And one time, they did the story of David and Bathsheba. And they showed it where he was looking out the balcony and he saw this woman. Of course, these were all white actors. And he saw this woman and he just, you know, just was smitten. And he called her in and he... Uh, totally convinced her to forget all about her husband who was off at war. Now, I myself looked at that even at that age. I think I was about 12. And I thought, well, why is she dance? Why is she bathing naked outside? I mean, she has an inside. Why is she doing this? And I don't see, I, I just, I could not get beyond that point that people have inside, inside plumbing, some kind of plumbing, some kind of water, or something you can do inside your house. Why are you outside within the eyesight of other people bathing? It's, it doesn't make sense to me. And that always stuck with me. So when I grew up and I put that idea about, well, why is Solomon even named Solomon? That's a reference to the sun, to like sun worship. And also, why is, as I said before, why did David die so young? He's a king. I mean, it, you know, he's a rich king. This doesn't make sense. Well, um, I kept reading, and I developed my theory that, well, hey, I think that there was, this was a coup. It was a coup. It was a way of getting somebody into that position. I also found out about Bathsheba's lineage. Her father was someone, I think, named Eliam, and her grandfather even though that's kind of weird because he was only like 20 years older than her or something like that. Something's wrong with the math. But anyway, he's listed as a grandfather, possibly a Hithophel. He was a great friend of, or advisor to David, even though they said that they argued. But still, he was listed as an extremely wise man. He was David's first advisor. If there was anybody who would know that David decided not to go off to war that particular day, it would have been Ahithophel. Ahithophel, and also people are quick to say, well, Bathsheba didn't even know David. How could she not know David? Bathsheba's husband was one of David's uh, strongest allies. One of his, what is it, 27 mighty men, or, or it went up to 80. But these were the people he counted on the most to go out and fight. So how could they have never met? So to me, it seemed, and this is a theory, that David was set up. I'm sorry, this looks to me like a coup. But in any case, 